We are incredibly different people. It's one of the wondrous things about us is that we are incredibly different. And yet, as different as we are, almost all of us have a single shared experience and one that we do not remember. And in fact, it's a shared experience not just with all of us, but with almost every human being who has ever been. And that experience is that at the moment of our birth, someone looked in our face in awe and wonder and loved us. We don't remember that. We don't remember what that was like. Now that feeling of awe and wonder, that feeling of beloved, was probably mixed with a lot of other things. It was mixed with pain and exhaustion. It might have been mixed with absolute terror, especially if it was the first child. But it was even for just a moment, a feeling of someone gazing on us with awe and wonder and love. And two things about that. It doesn't matter how active or unpresent or good or bad that person gazing on us was from that moment forward. We have different experiences of that. That moment still happened. It also happened before we did anything. We didn't do anything. We didn't perform. We didn't do anything to elicit that response. That awe, that belovedness was just because we were. It's an amazing thing, and it is our beginning. It is our genesis. When's the last time that you saw that look? When is the last time that you heard that voice, you are beloved? When is the last time that you really felt beloved? When is the last time that you really felt, yes, I am an image of God? When was the last time you felt that way? I would love it if we felt that way all the time. But I know my experience in my life and my experience as we have all shared lives together is that that experience, that feeling doesn't happen nearly often enough. And in fact, the times that it does happen just stand out and shine. My experience is that our experience is much more like that of a new friend I was meeting with this week an experience of a very different voice telling us who we are, a much more negative voice. She put it this way. She said, every morning I wake up and I spend my day climbing You Suck Mountain. Yeah. We were in a a room, a circle, when she was saying this, and everyone laughed and nodded their head because we all knew what she was talking about. We all know about those voices, those voices that come from inside of us, and certainly those voices that come from outside of us that say that we are not good enough, that far from being beloved and being looked on with awe and wonder, we are looked on as less than and never quite measuring up. How often do we hear, you are beloved, and how much time do we spend every day just climbing you suck mountain? One of them makes our heart sing. The other makes our heart sink. One of them is soul surging. The other one is soul sucking. And that's why I love that we start Lent with this gospel reading that we just heard. Because Lent is set up to be a 40-day journey up You Suck Mountain about how woefully we fall short. We start it with the great litany, which can just seem like us beating ourselves to death, and it goes on forever. 
And we can be overwhelmed by this sense that we are less than and that we are not good enough of our unworthiness. And then we hear this Gospel reading. We hear in those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. I am absolutely convinced that the reason this comes at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, the reason this comes before Jesus goes into the desert, is that he would not have lasted 30 seconds in the desert if he hadn't heard this voice. He would not have been able to go in there and wrestle with the temptations and wrestle with the devil and do all the things that he did all the way up to the cross and beyond. Talk about someone who over and over again had to climb. You suck mountain. It was Jesus. He could not have done that unless he had first heard and trusted this incredible voice of God. You are my beloved. In you I am well pleased. We can do incredible things, but first we have to hear this. First, we have to truly try to trust that voice. It has to start here. It has to start with us. If any of you have ever come up to communion, to the rail here, and asked for a blessing instead of receiving the sacrament, and I've been the one to offer God's blessing, you have heard me say these words. And I start with the blessing. And by the way, the word blessing, it's not some magic zap. It just means God says, this is good. You are good. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day. Know that you are good right now. Remain with you always. Know that you are good forever. And then, and may you always know how deeply God delights in you. Think about that one for a second. Try that on for size. How deeply God delights in you. When was the last time we really felt like anyone, much less God, delights in us? And yet that is the truest truth we can say. That God looks on us and loves us and actually, no matter, not even about what we do, but just who we are as images of God, God delights in us. God looks at us and light dances in God's eyes. God delights in us. God delights in you. As we learn to trust this for ourselves, we can start to trust it for each other. We're journeying into Lent. This is the first Sunday of Lent, and we're calling our Lenten journey this year face to face. And it's because what we're going to do this Lent is we're going to look each other in the face. We're going to look each other face to face, and we're going to see each other as beloved images of God. We're going to see each other. We're going to try our best, and it's going to be a struggle to see each other as how God sees us and to hear that voice as we gaze on each other's face. You are my beloved. And we're going to do it in a couple different ways. One of the ways we're going to do it is in here. We're going to be looking each other in the face. And we're going to try to see each other as we really are. And we're going to try to have what we call the real conversation. Jeff Kozatek was here last week, and he did the wonderful sermon about keeping our eyes on Jesus while standing on the ball with the straight jacket, and it was fantastic. And before then, he was up in our adult forum talking about how can we take our masks off. That was all about showing our real face, being who we really are, being vulnerable with each other in this space, and realizing that's a sacred trust for each other. And when we allow ourselves to be vulnerable, to greet each other as that beloved image of God. Next Saturday, the Reverend Jennifer Baskerville Burroughs is going to be here from the Diocese of Chicago. And Saturday afternoon here, I hope you can all come, 
She's going to equip us with skills to do that. Talk about how do we have the real conversation. And it really is how do we show our face to each other. How do we see God's face in each other. How do we do that? But in addition to doing that in here for ourselves, we're also going to be doing that for this wider St. Louis community. We're going to be looking each other in the face and we're going to be seeing the beloved image of God. Some of it is the artwork that's right here in the nave. We've been living with, for a couple weeks now, Kababi Bayok's amazing prints of his 365 days with Dad. Pictures like this one, where we are invited to look at these faces and see beloved images of God that God delights in. These faces that so much of our society looks at with fear, we are invited to look at with joy and delight and to participate in that delight of God. And then starting on Ash Wednesday, we have some other faces in our nave here. We have these faces. It's from a project called Faces Not Forgotten. In our nave, many of them are on a quilt up there. We have 40 faces like this, images of God. These are faces of young people who have been killed by gun violence right here in St. Louis. When a young person dies of gun violence, one of these artists goes to a family member, gets a snapshot, and then paints two pictures identical on handkerchiefs, gives one to the family, and then displays the other. We are going to be living with these images for these 40 days, and we're going to be gazing in their eyes, and we're going to let them look at us too. And we're going to ask, what does it mean that we live in a city where images of God like this are cut down with ridiculous regularity by gun violence? What does that call us to do? This is a beloved image of God. I am a beloved image of God. What does it mean in our relationship with each other and with the world? And then on March 8th, we're going to have Tracy Blackman in here, and she's going to preach to us. And then afterwards, we're going to have Alexis Templeton and Brittany Farrell and D. Ray McKesson, three of the leaders of the demonstration, the protest movement here, uh, for an hour and a half forum. And we're going to look each other in the face. And we're going to try to speak truth to each other and see each other as beloved images of God. And then later in the month, Tekka Childress is going to come here. And there's no one that I have met who looks on people struggling with homelessness and poverty as beloved images of God more than Tekka Childress. And she's going to, with some of our group that's been working on toxic charity, and what does that mean in this congregation, lead us in that conversation of what does it mean for all of us to live together as beloved images of God. This is going to be wonderful, holy, hard work. And I want to give us just a small taste of it this morning. A small taste of what it is like to look each other in the face in this way. So I want everyone to pick a partner. And if you're going to hate this, I swear it won't last longer than 30 seconds. Because some of you hate it, I know. Everyone pick a partner. Everyone pick a partner and turn to face them. And does anyone not have a partner? Raise your hand if you don't have a partner. Then look for someone else who's got their hand raised and find somebody. Everybody got someone? Okay. Now for 30 seconds, I want you to look on each other, and I want you to look on each other as beloved images of God. Seek out the beloved image of God in the other person. Go. Now I want you to say to each other, you are a beloved image of God. Okay. How was that? Was it weird? Okay, I heard some yes. We're not shooting the pastor yet. Yeah, we're not shooting the pastor yet. So this is hard work. There's a wonderful young woman who lives downtown who is in one of my uh, basic discipleship groups. And she has multiple sclerosis. And she shared with us in class 
that she said uh, she has to really monitor her, her energy levels. And she said, if there's a time where I'm not looking you in the eyes when we're talking, don't take it personally. She said, it means that I'm having a hard MS day. And she said, you might not know this, but what doctors have told her is the activity that takes more brain energy than any other activity, more than calculus, more than trying to remember something from your past, the activity that takes more brain energy than any other for a human being is looking another human being in the eyes. It takes more energy than any other activity. So when we talk about being face to face this Lent, it is wonderful, but it is hard work. And that's what we're going to do this Lent, and we're going to do it together. This Lent, we are going to tear down You Suck Mountain. This Lent, we are going to stand face to face, and we are going to proclaim how beloved each one of us is. This Lent, we are going to bless each other, and we are going to look in each other's eyes and say, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always, and may you always know how deeply God delights in you. This Lent together, we are going to trust that in here and out there, that we are all beloved images of God. Amen.